Guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about a quick problem and a solution that a lot of us face when designing tables on mobile. So imagine you have a table like this. You're going to go into mobile and you're going to do something like this where you're going to have your table and it's going to scroll horizontally. Now, there are a few things or problems here, particularly on mobile. A lot of times you actually don't know that you can scroll. So obviously you can reduce the column width and then make sure the second element is appearing. But even sometimes that does not work based on the size of the particular column and the different device sizes as well. The other problem with this particular approach is that if you actually want to see a person's email with some of the other details, let's say a person's name and their email or a person's username and their email, you can't really see all of that information together. And a bunch of a whole lot of information for comparison and actually hidden in this particular view. And then you obviously don't see your actions as well. And this particular checkbox pattern also doesn't really make sense completely because on mobile, you can obviously long press and select things. So a better way to do this, in my opinion, is something like this, where all of the information that you have is actually now categorized into cards. And this can easily be done in Figma using layer names and component variants. And sometimes you actually have a lot of information on mobile um, or even on desktop in that particular table. So it's not really necessary to display every single thing in this card format or in this particular form format what you can do is you can actually go ahead and hide information that is not crucial for a person to actually see and have it hidden in an inner view so if a person clicks on this then you have this additional information and even the edit and delete buttons if you actually want to see them and you can easily go back to the whole list as well so we're going to be exploring this in much depth and how to actually do it but this is just something that I feel like we should do when we're designing responsive tables. I've actually done a video where I show you my way of doing tables and I think that actually helps create tables on desktop and stuff along those lines. But I want to take that forward. I actually want to show you what I do for mobile or what we should ideally do for mobile. Uh, even I myself sometimes don't do it because I'm just lazy. But what we should do is we should create a mobile variant that's separate. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say, OK, this is our mobile variant. And in this particular thing, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab all of these important information and I'm just going to place them right here. And I can go ahead and delete the information that I don't need. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to place the tags as well because those are associated with my user. And I'm going to delete the actions. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to, let's say, just go ahead and actually give this a smaller size. Maybe let's say 300 pixels or 350 pixels, whatever that particular thing is. And we can go ahead and make this hug content. Okay, that's hug content. Let's go ahead and actually make this one hug content as well. And there you go. We also don't need the checkbox on mobile because on mobile, uh, if you want to select something, you can obviously long press it and select things. So let's go ahead and actually align things at the top. And then we can just go ahead and reorganize this data. Now, if you have these layers named correctly, like for example, this is name, this is username, this is role. Uh, once you actually switch variants, it's actually going to preserve that. So there's no need to actually uh, be uh, concerned about data being preserved. Very similarly, I can group these things together. I can, let's say, decide if I want to group these things together as well, do whatever and just give some spacing in between these elements. And there you go. That's what we have for mobile. And we can easily now go ahead to our component. We don't need this header anymore. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to go to each individual element, actually just press enter to select all of them and convert them to mobile. And as you can see on mobile, it's a much easier and much more digestible layout because we can see most information of our members. But one thing that I do also want to point, point out is sometimes let's say the table can be really long on desktop. Currently we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns, but maybe it's like 12 columns. Now that doesn't mean that on mobile we actually have to show everything because that can also lead to an information overload and that mobile table can actually feel like a lot. So what we can do instead is we can actually go ahead and we can, as you can see, the actions aren't here as well. So obviously we can do a long press and we can show the actions on that on mobile as well. But in my opinion, I think an even better thing to do would probably be, first of all, I'm going to change this particular property to uh, mobile. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add another variant. And this is going to be inner state. Um, inner state by default. Okay, that's let's, let's say inner state by default is actually none. So, or off. 
So there is no inner state for this. There's an inner state for this particular thing. And what that inner state is going to be like is, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and actually grab an icon from here. I'm going to place it. Uh, let's actually see. So we have some icons. Um, actually, let's use Chevron minus right. So here we have an icon Chevron minus right. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to slightly decrease it in size. Actually, when you're decreasing an icon in size, always be sure to use the K or the scale key so that the icon in itself can actually scale its border as well. I'm going to make this an auto layout. I'm going to expand this in height completely so that it fills the container so that it's centered. And we can go ahead and actually change the color to maybe something like, I don't know, gray. Uh, 300 something like this okay now it's looking good and now it indicates that if you tap on it something's gonna happen and we're now gonna go ahead and actually create an inner state for this so here obviously I need to go ahead and actually choose on for the inner state I'm gonna remove this icon and we can decide that by default I'm only gonna show the important information like for example the important information here are not the tags are not the phone number maybe those can be displayed afterwards and let me just go ahead and actually make this a fill container as well and just give me one second maybe we actually just want to reduce the spacing on the edge because we want this a, a bit on the right and maybe that's sufficient information now obviously this depends on a case by case basis and we are going to say okay at the inner screen we can obviously have this a bit more organized we can have the username at the top we can have the image at the top sorry and we can do a lot of things i can say that i want to add two buttons here now that we actually are in the inner state we can obviously display the buttons the reason why i wasn't displaying the buttons before was actually let's just copy these buttons that we already have here so we have both of these buttons actually copy the whole thing let's go ahead and remove that because the icons are already selected i don't want to do all of that work again uh, let's group these things together um, let's paste the icons here let's move this down and let's also go ahead and actually expand this a bit so we can see what we're doing there you go we have the icons and let's go ahead and say that these icons are actually is going to be leading and then let's go ahead and actually say okay this is going to be delete this one is going to be um, edit and here obviously we can say this is going to be hug content let's remove the border because we don't need it actually we can place the border at the top here in this particular instance let's go ahead and actually expand it completely make it we can make it centered or we can actually expand the buttons as well i think that's going to look slightly better expand the buttons make these buttons small they're already small maybe we can give them a secondary gray something like this and let's go ahead and actually give some more spacing in between them and remove the spacing at the edges and maybe just give a spacing at the top of something like 16 pixels or maybe it can be slightly less um, and let's see what happens okay so we have this now i think this looks okay obviously you guys can go ahead and actually customize these things yourself uh, give a bit more spacing and adjustments here maybe 16 pixel spacing here and this can also be 16 and this this whole container spacing yeah it's 16 as well so now it should be a bit more equal maybe this particular spacing in between the icons should also be 16 just to be consistent and i think this looks good i think this obviously is too close to the edge i don't think i'm necessarily a fan of that so let's go ahead and actually make this 16 as well I think this looks much better we can obviously go ahead and increase the icon size as well maybe say this is going to be 20 pixels okay so now that we're done with that we can now go ahead and actually just duplicate the screen i want to say that if a person clicks on this i want you to go to this screen this is going to be let's say uh, a member details screen we can go ahead and actually get rid of these icons actually one thing about the icons is we can actually have the edit and the other icon here directly as well at the top if we don't actually want them at the bottom so that's also an option but now let's go ahead and actually just say that this is going to be inner state and now let's go ahead and actually remove all the other things that are unnecessary though so a layout like this can actually allow you to have a lot more information displayed here in a much nice manner and obviously we need a back button so i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this i'm going to say there's going to be a back button here this is going to be back let's go ahead and actually reduce the spacing 
here maybe 16 pixel spacing actually let's just make it 8 because i'm going to hide the border around this particular icon i'm going to make it tertiary and i'm going to obviously make this particular icon chevron left <clears throat> so now that i've done that obviously clicking on this icon is going to take the user back clicking on this particular icon is going to take the user forward and we can do something like this to make this obviously a bit less actually much more interesting so yeah, I think that's a much better way of designing tables responsively on mobile. It's much more scalable and a bit more comprehensive rather than our traditional way of having those scrolls and stuff along those lines. So yeah, let me know what you think about it. Obviously, there are much better ways to organize this data. That wasn't really per the purpose of this video. It was just to show you that we shouldn't really do the lazy thing and have a table scroll responsively. That's pretty much it. Do subscribe, you hit the bell icon, and I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.